engineering team were testing pieces of equipment, getting it set up, and a key piece of hydraulic equipment has snapped and can't be fixed in the field, we basically need a replacement part. Well, it's essentially a showstopper. If we can't get the part from New Zealand or from even Canada and get down to uh, Antarctica on time and out to the site, then we can't drill. going after is of huge societal importance because it is trying to understand how much and how fast sea level will rise into the future um, due to the global warming we are introducing by emitting greenhouse gases. At the moment we know from satellite observations that the Western Arctic ice sheet is melting but we don't know how fast that will happen in the future. We don't know where the thresholds in the system are and the Sways to Sea project really tries to give us the first geological records which can really test how the Western Arctic ice sheet will react when temperatures are one, two or maybe three degrees warmer than today. So we schlepped out here across the ice sheet, not us personally, but some wonderful people from Antarctica, New Zealand. They traversed out all our equipment, which is a big drill rig, which uh, basically has been developed just for this project. We are trying with this drill rig to get 200 meters of sediment core from this location. This has never been done so far away from a base and so close to the center of the Western Arctic ice sheet. We need lots of water to bore our hole through the ice shelf. At the moment we are making some water so that we can actually get our heaters up and running and circulating from our plover tank through our heaters and then once we have that circulation and we know everything's working well we can consider um, hot water drilling. Uh, today is a super exciting day. It took us a good two weeks to kind of put up all the tents, put together all the system for the hot water drilling. Getting to this point where we can finally start melting a hole through the ice shelf is a really big milestone. When you're drilling, if it's boring, you're doing well. It is pretty tedious and we obviously spot each other out, so we're not there for hours and hours on end. Yeah, it's going down pretty well at the moment. Uh, the first part of the hole is in the, the fern, the, the soft fluffy stuff, which appears to have ice lenses and layers in it, so it's just a bit hard to get through, a bit of a challenge. Basically, we, we've got someone who's in Auckland who, who's willing to go pick it up from Flyway if it's still sitting in Flyway and fly it to Christchurch today. But the big question is, where where is it? Yeah, my concern is it's now it's Saturday. We're still uncertain where it is. Um, weather here is not looking likely. If we don't pick this thing up at some stage on Saturday and Sunday, it's hard to see it getting on one of the scheduled flights on Monday if they go. Uh, and then we're really behind the eight ball.
excitement. We're gonna fizz over soon. Ooh, ooh. Here we go, here we go. That's it, that is so breakthrough. Woo! Yeah, woo, woo, woo! Take that glory. We've just broken through the bottom of the ice shelf, so drilled 588 metres, I think, and we've reached the bottom of the ice shelf, so we're uh, connected to the open water below us. It's a big step forward for sure, and it's all very exciting to get through and know we can carry on. Victory toasty. Tastes like victory. that was going to bring our part today had to uh, be diverted to Vanuatu. So really sad for the people of Vanuatu, of course, but um, it just means we have to wait a little bit longer and hopefully that part gets on a plane tomorrow. We're sort of running out of time. We're getting a bit squeezed. I'm certainly getting a little bit worried. Um, well, quite worried, quite a lot worried that we, we're not going to get the part in time. We've got a rig sitting right behind me and I was just looking at the big gaping hole where the motor used to be. And we've got a drill rig that can lift the pipe up, lower it down a hole, um, we can do some of our work, but the key component, the bit that actually turns the pipe so we can drill to depth is missing. And so I'm trying to do some science with the gravity core, working with the team, but I keep looking around and seeing this big empty space. I feel a bit sorry for it. It almost looks forlorn sitting here in the cold expanse of the Ross Ice Shelf, knowing it has a really important job to do, but just it doesn't have its heart. It doesn't have the key component that's going to allow it to do its job. So I'm humanizing a drill rig, but you know, it's sort of how it feels. It's a long way to come, it's a heck of an effort to get everything here, to make the hot water hole, to be faced with the potential that we can't actually drill. It's just, it's almost soul destroying to be honest, but I'm trying not to let it get me down um, and we still have some time. It's essentially a plastic tube that's stuck into a device that holds a bunch of weight. Really simple, we just lower it down on a cable and it thumps into the seafloor using Earth's gravitational pull. 55 metres. It looks like it's got sediment in it. Oh, look at that! that. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, there's a lot of sediment in there! That's a goodie, that's a goodie. I went amazingly well. We got one meter and 11 centimeters full of sediment in our first gravity core of the season. engineers there had the motor unit this part was a piece of and so they put it together and uh, we're now hoping to get this part of course out to us tomorrow. <laughs> drillers are now getting ready to, to put pipe down the hole, the big bottom hole assembly, the big weights that, that go down into the seafloor and hold everything firm and steady, so that's starting right now. All hands on deck but also a tricky time because we're working in a pretty confined work area with uh, very heavy equipment, so all hands on deck but also trying to, it's like a ballet. <laughs> So this time last year I watched them start to put the sea riser into the hole in the ice shelf and went to bed and when I got up they'd stopped because we had the slip on the fiberglass and so I'm a little bit nervous to be honest, this is sort of the point at which we stopped last year. I have a good feeling, there's a lot of confidence in the team, we're using steel so I have a good feeling that we're going to get beyond this and start to actually drill into the sea floor. I have trouble to contain myself now. Um, we are 
as of today, at a point where we've never been last year. So we just finished successfully deploying the riser. It's something that never has been done. It's a brilliant new piece of engineering down there as well with a tight compensator, which one of our engineers developed. It's in there now. We're running pipe down now, and then the drilling can start. And hopefully when I wake up for my next shift, there will be sediment core on deck, so can't wait. managed to get the sea riser deployed which is a really challenging part of the program and, and I was certainly really confident that once we got the sea riser deployed connecting the ice surface to the seafloor that we'd be off to the races that we'd get all the core we wanted and we got to the point where we were then deploying the NQ string inside the sea riser we were helping the drillers running pipe into the tent and um, suddenly we stopped suddenly the drill string uh, was dropped inside the, the sea riser. To me, my heart dropped um, and after sort of a little bit of investigation, some questions, we, we realised we were in a bit of trouble. made a massive effort to get here and we thought we were making good progress but we're, we're no longer able to continue. Uh, we're not able to get the critical geological archives we came here to get to help us answer the questions we want to answer about climate change, global warming and the impacts of that warming on the ice shelf and the consequences for humanity so it's hugely disappointing to be sitting here knowing we don't have what we came to get is, yeah, it's a real bummer. I think all of us got to the point when you come out here, it's something very challenging we're trying to do. Uh, it's something nobody has ever done before. And I feel we very successfully built on where we were last year. Um, we were very, very close to get what we wanted. Um, unfortunately, we didn't. Mm. It's a lot of, lot of effort. Um, a lot of effort to miss out here. Yeah. Personally, but also I feel you know, we were really trying to contribute to a better understanding of what we're going to face in the future, and and that's um, yeah, that's very disappointing for me as a scientist, but also very disappointing for me as a father. Yeah, the knowledge that we're trying to gain that we believe really matters. It's not the only thing that that scientists are trying to do around the world to help us better prepare for climate change. But from an Antarctic point of view, we think it's a pretty key part of the puzzle that needs to be, that needs to be solved and that, that the knowledge is not just because it's interesting, it's, it's because it matters. Um, the knowledge that we're trying to gain will feed in, could feed into, should feed into policy to help us yeah, make the world a, a, a better, more resilient place as we battle with climate change.